Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warmer 2, Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are going to be doing a double cast because there's a whole bunch of new content obviously with the new patch and I just want to try to sort of demonstrate a few more things than, than usual I guess. I just wanted, there's a lot to show and there's a lot to uh, look at and I was on the receiving end of some things, uh, Was got to test out some units I didn't really get to test out before and uh, so I wanted to show some of it off. So this first match, Death Pass, Skaven against Dark Elves, and I decided to bring a, at least for this patch, or so far, more conventional Skaven build with Zales and Rattling Guns, because I really wanted to give a shot to those gunnery teams that we didn't get to test when uh, I was doing the stream, because my opponent's kept picking Skaven. So yeah, either way, going over the build, we are running Ikit Claw. I'm not sure Ikit's actually necessarily the most competitive choice, uh, but he is very strong on his doom wheel uh he's got some awesome spells obviously he's got death frenzy he's got howling warp because he's got lord ruin he's got warp lightning uh musk of fear of course a nice little aoe debuff or map wide debuff uh unlimited power great winds of magic generator storm demon is basically an amber spear skaven flavor uh with 400 meters range brass orb a uh, nice vortex that you can use to disrupt your opponents doesn't do too much damage but um does cause a lot of disruption that's really what matters with it Besides that, no other heroes or support from that from that end of things. Uh, the only other mobile unit we've brought a single unit of Doom Flares to sort of harass our opponent's backline, disrupt, perhaps pin down large targets with their mass. But these guys are, of course, very useful. They're an expensive chariot for sure, twelve hundred gold, but very tanky. They've got hundred armor, twenty-four more armor when they're in melee. Uh, they're very mobile. They've got high bonus versus infantry of twenty-six, monsters weapon strength, just a nutty unit overall. Besides that, it's basically a bunch of infantry and gunnery so our front line is clan at spears not much to be said for them we do have the vulcan's tail slashers the regiment renowned clan rats these guys are only 500 gold they're basically just clan rats with better weapon strength um and fire damage and fire resistance but those two things don't really matter in most matchups uh, i think that's a fairly irrelevant upgrade the main thing is that you get more weapon strength besides that we've got some clan rat shields with as filler we do have the Regiment of Renown Stormwind Council Guard here in the back. These guys are, of course, unbreakable and have Guardian, though that's not going to be too important in this matchup. I mostly just wanted them to anchor me against Terror Routes and uh, Backline Harass from the Dark Elves. And then a whole bunch of Skaven Slaves, of course, because we want more mass. The more um, the more trash you can have all over, the better, because the better chance of snaring your opponents as they try to push through. We do also have the Natty Bubo Sharpshooters, as well as a single unit of Warplock Gisales. You can see these guys already leaving their purple contrails as they start sniping at my opponent's army. Such an amazing looking unit. I just love the double rat team <laughs> propped up on their on their um, pavises. I guess it's not really it's, this isn't really what a pavis looks like in, in real life, but <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. Uh, look at that. He's got like fancy or horned rat emblems there. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we do have a generic unit on the other end, and then we do have two units of rattling guns. No regiment around in here, just the normal rattlings. Um, and these guys also look pretty amazing with that <laughs> gas feed and just all these. I don't even know like how they how they're supposed to be firing. It's, it's just pretty insane, pure madness. Either way, pushing in against the dark elves. The dark elf build here very campy and very widely spread out. I'm not sure why my opponent left these black guard here. Maybe as a spotter so he could see if I had hidden units or something. I'm not sure, but they're all the way out there. Maybe I forgot about them. But his lord, supreme sorcerer's dark magic up here in the, on the high ground. She does have soul stealer, doom bolt. blade wind, as well as spiteful conjuration and arcane conduit. So we're gonna be able to spam spells and no doubt very cheap. Five Dark Shards boxed up on the high ground alongside the Reaper Bolt Throw. And this is actually going to be very annoying. Because for me, it's going to be very difficult to get good shots up on the, to this high ground with my Black Powder weapons. Do keep in mind that while people were complaining a lot about the Arc on Gisales, it's not actually that... It's good at long range, but it's still a pretty Black Powdery weapon. You're still going to whiff a lot uh, or struggle to get a good, a good angle. And you can see here while we're picking up part of these Dark Shards, it's definitely not exactly premier shooting and these guys actually started trailing their way up when i ordered them to attack the bolter because that's what i was trying to remove from play so very good abuse of terrain there for my opponent besides that he's got some bleak swords on the front line to hold the line black guard on the flanks so good anchors and then a hydra to provide fear terror and all that nastiness and breath attacks of course which is slaughter support skaven so right now we're just kind of taking it uh i can't really do much pushing in is what I, ends up being my only option really uh Obviously, this is just such a strong camping position, and uh, there's not too much that you can do as Skaven to shoot this down. I could have, if I had Plague Claw Catapults, I could, but I hadn't really been anticipating this sort of camp. So, uh, 
Oh well, <laughs> what can you do? We're gonna push forward. You can see some of my units getting pounded, but the scatter shot isn't gonna do too much to the rattling gun weapons teams. Um, it's honestly whiffing most of the time. You can see Natty Bubos there doing some damage, and the war planning is gonna go down. I do believe that was a normal cast. Takes down a few models, does some damage. It's definitely a very powerful spell for how cheap it is. Uh, it's a it's a big selling point on that spell. It's just low low cost over here. You can see how much the vortex does. Brass orbs they disrupted the formation, killed three models, but nothing impressed. I actually don't even know if sniper killed the three models earlier, so that might be the case there. But uh, oh no, these guys didn't even lose any models. It's these guys who lost models, so yeah, they did nothing. The hydra comes in, routes the Vulcan stale slasher, so they get nothing done. That said, the hydra is getting peppered by rattling fire, though at this range the rattlings are very inaccurate. Uh, what I actually think that of the weapons teams, rat, the Rattlings are by far the most well-balanced of the bunch. The reason being is that their accuracy at long range is terrible, so while they do have that suppression effect, which is awesome, outside of point-blank range, their damage output is god-awful. Uh, you don't really have to worry about Rattling Guns um, crushing you at long range with just raw damage output, in my opinion. At least as far as what I've experienced in the game so far. Regardless, over here, the breath attack just roasts so many of my troops. My clan has routing the poor Giselles, trying to trek up to get shots, which is just disastrous. Finally, I commit the Doomflash. I'm realizing this is complete screw over. I'm going to be completely ruined. Doomflash is just going to bowl through these dark shards, get in there, and start shutting stuff down, getting these guys offline, t teaching these elves a lesson, showing them that uh, rat unicycles are OP. In the meantime, over here, poor Ikit does try to fire a. a uh, a storm demon into these guys. He's getting bogged down though in the black guard, so this is very unfortunate. He's not able to accelerate through, and he's taking huge amounts of damage because black guard is no joke. Uh, they they do a lot of damage in close quarters. Unfortunately, for my opponent though, he's not really able to shut down the uh, doom flares. He pops the soul stealer, but that's not really going to cut the mustard against these guys. They're just going to keep rampaging around. In the meantime, this hydra is being promptly whiffed on by all of my troops. Um, you can see the rattling guns at long range is doing very little now. Their potential damage output, as you all know, is insane. It's 339 over 10 seconds. If we look here, we can see shots per volley 18, the damage is 2 and 6, which is just nuts. Um, so you got 8 damage times 18. That's like 80, um, that's like 144 damage per volley, potentially, uh, on each gun. But most of that's missing. So that said, the War Hydra definitely getting shipped down. In the meantime, Ikit Claw running amok here with his, uh, with his lightning blasts. It is worth noting, I think, that uh, I don't actually know if on Akit, in Akit's case, you can see he fires three projectiles. So none of the Doom Wheels, when you see these big numbers for their projectiles, uh, the, whether the Regiment of Renown or Akit's uh, wheel, it's because they get more projectiles. It's not because they do more damage themselves. So just something I felt was worth mentioning. Doom Flares over here, breaking those Dark Shards. Uh, the Warp Lightning coming down, roasting more Dark Shards. Akit just running amok and dropping them sweet Terror Bombs. Up to 86 kills now, so doing some work. While here in the pits... I keep getting fought off. The bleak source <laughs> routed my boys over there. These rattling guns have been routed. Uh, over here, it's a pure mosh pit, just a blob. We are trying to snipe down the Hydra, which is surprisingly just weathering the storm here. Uh, I don't think it's the armor buffs, that's for sure, but I, I'm not entirely sure how it's tanking through so well. Probably the missile resist. Stacked on top of the fact that the DPS is not necessarily the best on the Rizales, maybe. I'm not sure. Either way, over here, the Doom Flayers doing a great job crushing these Reapers. The Super Sorcerers here trying to catch them. They're just kind of running back and forth uh, and shutting everything down and doing some major work already up to Chevron. Over here, in the meantime, the Black Guard getting overrun, just swarmed by rats. Uh, there's not much they're going to be able to do. This Council Guard is in there as well. And these guys are truly the elite of the elite. Definitely no pushovers. Uh, even by non skaven standards, these guys are actually a pretty respectable unit, in my opinion. Um... And they're going to be able to tie these guys down. They're going to be able to hold the line and anchor things. Uh, the Dark Shards here routing. And as these routes start happening, we're going to be in a much better spot. Because we're going to be able to pursue these guys off the field. And really finally buckle this formation. And over here, the Hydra is advancing. And you can actually see just how much better the Rattling Guns are doing at, po at point blank range. Uh, that's really what they're... It took like six or 700 damage in a few seconds. Not even all the Rattlings firing. And I think that shows just how... These guys are... Look at how much damage it's taking. And that was like two or three Rattlings spinning up there. At point blank. Um, so these guys, the, the rattling guns are ridiculous at close range, but at long range is where they really struggle. I think the smoke bomb variant might actually be pretty good. I'll have to give it some testing sometime. But I actually think it's going to be a solid unit just because you need to get close that distance. Anytime the Hydra is running out of HP, it's basically hit its healing cap. Council Guard are tearing it to shreds. They've got very good melee defense. Uh, actually, the same as its melee attack, so not too bad. But uh, they're going to be able to just break it with their arm, arm piercing and their anti-large, especially. 
and they're getting some support here as well from her fire. Over here in the meantime, it's a bit, this was like a bit of a peripheral fight. This just kind of went down on the flank here. We've got Skaven Slaves bogging down Blackguard. We're getting mown down by these rattling guns, so a very thematic sort of situation where the elite of the Dark Elves, the cream of the crop, is being shredded by cheap Skaven sh units, bogging them down, and then uh, gunnery just unloading. So these Blackguard up to 110 kills. You can see that the rattling guns definitely earning their keep here, just bogging them down and uh, unloading on this formation. That said, they're definitely going to get caught because I wasn't paying attention to that after, after I set them loose, and uh, yeah, they're going to get wrecked. In the meantime, over here, Ikit does run over the Sorceress. He does come back with a vengeance and is stomping all over her face. Uh, over here, the Doom Flayers, who are still intact, still on three models, running around muck and running down the Dark Shards. I was wanting to remove all of them from play. My opponent finally realizes he forgot his Black Guard and is pulling them out. That said, by now, it's too little too late. Um, <coughs> excuse me. In hindsight, I think... Actually, a mistake on my part was not killing these guys immediately. I could have easily baited my opponent down if I'd just gone for these guys. He wouldn't have been able to fire from the high ground, really, with his Dark Shards. They had too short range. We would have been able to get a free kill there, and it would have been much, much better, I think. Regardless, these Black Guard are routed. They're getting run out down. These Black Guard over here are not routed, but they're getting bogged down. The big problem, of course, being that once Murder's Prowess is kind of used up, the killing power of Dark Elves is fairly average so for them to chew through all these clan rats and scaven slaves it's going to take forever they don't cause fear or terror so these guys aren't going to route that easy and yeah it's going to be a while now the black guard here trying to be courageous trying to push into the fray and getting pounded the scaven marksman just chipping them down shredding the formation and these guys definitely not having the time of their lives losing hundreds of hp to those rattling uh to those warp blocks ales actually and another one topples just warp stone to the face as my opponent does push in here, you can see uh, we're going to push in with our Council Guard. I'm not entirely sure if Council Guard would win out against Blackguard in a straight-up fight. Blackguard is one of the weaker, actually, one of the weaker um, units as far or uh, halberd units as far as fighting infantry goes. The Hydra over here completely shatters. Tied down by Skaven Slaves. Awesome animation there as it gobbles down a rat. But um, yeah, he's not getting out of there alive. Rattling guns unloading and the beast topples, so... He's gone. These Blackguard, yeah, like I said, Blackguard, not the best at killing infantry, so while they might do okay against the Council Guard when they're crippled like this, I don't actually know if they'd win out in a normal battle. Uh, Natty Bubos are in here as well now. 43 melee defense on these guys when with their uh, strength and numbers active, which is ludicrous. Honestly, I don't think, I think that's the one of the, another big problem with the Gisales. They're actually kind of hard to kill in close quarters, but it's going to be pure victory at this point for the Skaven. Um, despite huge misplays on my part, certain things just going horribly wrong. Uh, we, we scraped it out. We scraped out the win. So a big factor there was my opponent's deployment, which was honestly pretty good uh, or clever. He took advantage of the fact that he had arc and I didn't. Uh, perhaps anticipating a lot of black powder weapons, which he was right. Uh, that said, I kind of misplayed. I, I played. I fed units in one at a time. I kind of fed in my infantry slowly. I didn't really dash in with the doom flares immediately. I didn't dash in with Ikit claw immediately, where I really should have. Um, I probably should have, could have whittled down the black guard some with the warplock Gisales, and I just didn't. Um, rattling guns got some value, but not as much as I would have liked because of that flat ground. And there's not too much you can do about that, actually. These guys have just a bad arc, and that's to be expected. Um, uh, but definitely a, a much closer fight than I would have liked. I do think it shows some of the limitations of the weapon seems. If you can abuse terrain, uh, if you can abuse various resistances or get or sort of um, weather the storm. You can often pull out some impressive stuff. It, it, a lot of it, a lot of the games I've found uh, against Skaven is that the Skaven will generally get, all, especially out of the Warplock sales, they'll get all their ammo out, but oftentimes they struggle to really get their money's worth on that ammo. Uh, they need to be killing elites. Keep in mind, Warplock sales, while they look like a very impressive unit, are 900, in the case of the Dirgeman, around 1,150 gold unit. So if they're not killing expensive stuff, if you're shooting Dark Shards with them, even if you kill a whole unit of Dark Shards with and with all your ammo, that's not cost-effective. It's not cost-effective to kill a unit of Bleak Swords or whatever. You need to be killing Elites, you need to be sniping Blackguard, you need to be sniping Hydras or Artillery Pieces or Enemy Lords. Otherwise, you're just not getting your money's worth on the uh, Sharpshooters, especially uh, if, you're, if you're using up all your ammo killing these cheap trash units. So... Just figured that was worth mentioning. Uh, without further... Uh, as for my opponent's build, I don't really have any comments right now because... He obviously had a plan with the high ground there and uh, how he wanted to bunker down. 
personally, I think if you, if your opponent had brought a rush build, this would not be very good at all. If, for example, I brought like three Doom Flares and like some Rat Ogres and a bunch of trash, maybe like a Plague Furnace, this would be a horrible build. You're going to get melted. Um, all the Skaven have to do to deal with your Hydra is bring some Pebbles or like some sh or Shuriken or whatever. Uh, or a Plague Claw Catapult. Another thing is that the Reaper Bolt Thrower, while it does out, while it will out fight a Plague Claw in a straight up shootout, if your opponent brings as Skaven, you bring Warplock Gisales, like a single unit of them, and then you bring a Plague Claw, you can shut down all this, or you can beat down all this Dark Elf army with your Plague Claw, and your Sharpshooter Shooters can then pick off artillery that tries to push up the counter battery. So, uh, worth noting there, I think. Regardless, well played to Vicious Helsing here, and we're going to jump on over to the second game I wanted to demonstrate uh, and look at some Empire on Lizardman action. This time around we are on the Spice Dunes and the thing I want to draw your attention to in this matchup is the unit model count. 1061 for me, I brought an average anti-lizard army. I'm not going to say it's like my, necessarily my most competitive build. I'm not going to say it's my least competitive build, just an average I'd say the anti-lizardman army. I wanted to test out the new Witch Hunter. My opponent Decided to really cheese here. You can see 55 entities, absolutely ridiculous. Um, th and this, I think, this match demonstrates some of the new cheeses and problems that this match demonstrates. I think it really demonstrates also the fact that maybe unit limits or unit minimum unit requirements need to be implemented into a uh, quick match. Because previously, the other really abusive single entity build was... Vampire counts, where you'd see like 11 model builds uh, with more dissensions, black coaches, necromancers, and mass spam. Uh, but that's been neutered a bit with the nerfs to summons, in my opinion. But just look at this composition that my opponent brought. Uh, I'm going to go over my Empire build real quickly, because this is actually a decent anti-lizard build, uh, and for those of you guys who might be interested in fighting lizards, it's not bad. Front line of great swords. Spearman with shields on the flanks. The Great Swords will out-trade Saurus. They'll do okay against Temple Guard, uh, and they'll hold fairly well just in general. Spearmen are just there as cannon fodder. They're there to tie things down, buy you time for your guns to win. And otherwise, I do believe they actually beat Skinks in a 1v1, or at least trade very effectively, so that's good. And for my Lord, Balthazar Gelt, he's up in the sky on Quicksilver. I actually didn't bring Final Transmutation, which in hindsight against this build would probably be ideal. I uh, definitely would recommend bringing Final Transmutation after seeing this composition. Uh... But we've got Staff of Alons, Arcing Conduit, Glittering Robe, Plague of Rust, and Searing Doom. Searing Doom, good against Skink Mobs. Um, metal Shifting, nice to buff your troops. Plague of Rust, uh, good to debuff enemy Cav, especially, for to help your Knights of Blazing Sun win against like Cold Ones. Uh, glittering Robe to help your troops stand against Saurus Spam, because it's a very common tactic here. Now, personally, if I wanted to cram in a... Uh, a um, crap, I can't even talk. If I was looking to cram in a Final Transmutation, I'd probably just cut... Uh, just so you guys know what, what I'd cut here, I'd cut Metal Shifting, Searing Doom, and Evasion, and I think that would be enough to get me a Final Transmutation. Now besides that, Witch Hunter has been reworked, so I, I will go over him a little bit here. Um, accusation now debuffs enemy melee defense, armor, and missile resist. Now this is, in some people's minds, probably a nerf. It's no longer a Super Spirit Leech, but um, I think it's a, in some ways it's a buff. It's a, it's a much more versatile spell now. You can use it in literally any situation. It can help your infantry fight better because your non-AP infantry can now do better against armored troops. Your cav can now do better against armored troops. Um, all your melee troops can do better because of the melee defense debuffs. If you need to make enemies more vulnerable to your shooting, reduce missile resist and armor, also very helpful. So I actually really like this new accusation because it gives you so much more utility. It really defines the, I think, way Empire is supposed to be a combined arms and versatile faction rather than just an OP smash you in the face faction. Besides that, for our guns, Strong Revenge and Silver Bullets, then double handguns, two overwhelm big dinos, of course, with Black Powder, two Nets of the Blazing Sun, and the Zintler's Rice Guard to provide mass, as well as to counter enemy cap, because with the help of uh, Plague of Rust, these guys will definitely be able to do the trick. Now, for my opponent, he's got two cold ones. That is literally his only actual unit. Feral cold ones, and then a bunch of single entities. So fun build here. Definitely, lots going to be lots of entertainment. Uh, for his lord, he's brought Tenwan. He's got Wild Heart, Flock of Doom, Transformation of Kadon, Arcing Conduit, Stand Your Ground, and Focus Instinct. So he's going to be able to stop Rampage, and he is mounted on a Horn one. So he's going to be pretty nippy. Won't lie though. Look at this guy. He looks so dope. Tenwan is pretty awesome looking. But uh, not with a build like this. I'm, I, you can already tell I'm salty, and I, I kind of have about this build because I don't think it's uh, particularly fun. For El Cardosaur, which is obviously a pretty good unit, it does have some leadership issues, but with the help of 10 and 1 and uh, all these other units, it should hold up okay. It's obviously got Rampage, but 10 and 1 can stop that. 
Sarah Scarvet, who's of course got cold blooded, and he's a pretty brutal fighter. Uh, he didn't get buffs this patch, but I do think the extra leadership on him actually might make him worthwhile compared to a normal Star, uh, Star uh, Carnosaur after having used these units in battles. Besides that, we've got an Ancient Stegon on with the Ark of the Engine of the Gods, who's got the AoE 5% damage resist. He's got more wounds and magic generation and burning alignment, which is a death laser from the skies. Two best Thelons with Rev Crystals to heal all that single entity spam. And Lord Croak, who is here to punish me for blopping. You can see he's got all three stages of Deliverance of Itza, Supreme Shield with Old Ones, and uh, he does actually have the Golden Death Mask. So this is going to be lots of fun, as you guys can already tell. My opponent is immediately charging into me. And uh, perhaps this was a bit, honestly a bit of a mistake on his part. He's, he's feeding in all his troops at once, uh, just trying to pile through. Not entirely sure what he was looking to do. You can see the Feral Carnosaur is leading the charge. Um, he's going to dive into the spears here. And immediately we're going to converge with our knights. You can see over on the flank here, my knights of the Blazing Sun looking to get in on my opponent's troops. And we're just trying desperately to stop these Carnosaurs from plowing through. You can see these guys rampaging over here. Uh, we're just punching through them with masses of fire from the guns. Unfortunately, this was a misplay on my part. These guys over here, the Sterling's Revenge and these handguns should have been firing immediately. And because of that, only the Silver Bullets and these handguns actually got shots in early on. So this Feral Carnosaur might have been dead or routed by now if I'd gotten all four guns shooting at him much or sooner. But unfortunately I didn't. You can see though he's pushing through. Accusation is helping, obviously. But uh, obviously Senior Ground countering that a good bit. That's that he's going to route here and be able to break his leadership. Next up is the Sar Scarvet who we hit with a Plague of Rust. It is worth noting that his melee defense, once standing your ground expires, is not that good, so our knights do have a decent chance of whittling him down. Uh, and as my opponent closes with the monsters, we are simply going to flee, pulling away here with our guns, trying to escape. And in the meantime, the crossfire just continues wailing on the Star Scarvet here. He's been hit by a Rev Crystal, but it's not going to save him from routing. So he's removed from play there. This guy's completely routed, so that is good. It completely shattered him. But now, Deliverance of Itza. Overcast coming in. You can see I don't have any heals, so these Zandler's Rice Guard are fracked. This blob of infantry, I saw it coming. I started turning away to ra run away, actually, but I just couldn't. And you can see that explosion just decimates my troops. Two great swords completely tear out. Spearmen annihilated, basically, and uh, just a disaster. And Balance of Power is still about dead center. You can see the crossfire coming in. My knights, though, pouring into the fray here, diving in against Lord Croak. And you can see his soul rising there from the depths to try to fight back. But honestly, Knights of Blazing Sun will put a decent dent in him. Croak is incredibly squishy in close quarters, 45 armor, uh, melee defense of only 12. So he's not too impressive in that sense. Uh, he's bad even by Slon standards. Over here, the Zintler's Rice Guard, their immunity psychology is huge. Now, if there's a unit, I, weirdly enough, even though this is a very gun-heavy match usually for Empire, if there's actually a unit, I think you should always or almost always bring against Dinos. It's actually the Zintler's Rice Guard. Because their psychology in this matchup is amazing. Besides that, though, my opponent here is desperately trying to shut down my guns. So that is the big threat to his blob. If he can remove my guns, I'm completely screwed. There's nothing I can do. End of story. Like, these Knights of Blazing Sun will get worn down. I don't have heals. Um, over here, we are casting... Uh, the, my opponent is casting the Death Laser. We're trying to. You can see a Deliverance of Itza, because I wasn't paying attention, goes down to my Knights of Blazing Sun and annihilates the unit. So this was disastrous, and this was a misplay on my part. If I'd pulled these guys away, I could have easily saved them and had a full unit of Knights of Blazing Sun. That said, we're slowly but surely our guns. They're holding their own. We're disengaging them. These guns got clear, and now they're wailing on my opponent. Um, these far hold ones broke, uh, but our great swords, you know, rallying. The Empire keeps coming back to the fight. This Star Scarvet here hit with a Rev Crystal again. But the gun's just unloading, and whenever my opponent routes them off, they rally out in the distance. Another unit here that's great, Sterling's Revenge. Once again, they're immune to psychology. Such an amazing tool to have. Over here, Lord Croak thinks he's awesome, so we're pursuing him with a Witch Hunter. Unfortunately, the Witch Hunter is pretty terrible against Croak, because his magic pistol does very little damage. And in melee, he also does magic damage, which is mitigated by Croak a good bit. That said, the Brave Knights here, the Knights of the Blazing Sun, honestly, alongside the Zintler's Rex just bogging these monsters down and buying me the time I desperately need here. Rev Crystal going down again. My opponent is just cycling those ridiculous heals, uh, and we're now focusing Lord Croak because I realize his nukes are going to annihilate my force if I don't get rid of him. So you can see even Baltz or Gelt diving in there, using his impressive charge bonus of 70. Do keep in mind, this actually makes Gelt decent in a charge. He's not a great character in general as far as, like, fighting goes, obviously. Uh, but if he can get in there and clock a person on the head, he'll do okay. So Clark's Crook, Clark, Crook's almost gone. He's getting gunned down here by the Sterling's Revenge. Uh, he's all, down to 66, 50 HP, 48, and the last volley of pistols does put him into the ground. So he is gone. You can see his spirit rising to join the old ones, and uh, that's that's him, him gone. Now realizing my opponent was healing the Star Scarvet, not wanting any more sort of death lasers, I killed these big old Stegodon, which now leaves my opponent with still a pretty respectable pocket of troops. Sure. 
Croak is gone. Um, his Sarscarve is mauled. He's lost a bunch of dinos, basically entirely. But he still does have some troops. He's got Feral Cold Ones rallying in the distance. Uh, I actually forgot about my Knights all the way out here. These Knights of Blazing Sun that got nuked earlier by Croak are all the way out there. Uh, and the gun, but we do have some guns online, so that is definitely nice. Sarscarve, it does go down. But there are still two Bestilodons as well as Ten Ten Ten, Ten, Ten Wan there. And uh, Ten Wan now is going to launch a charge of the Light Brigade here against the handguns. Getting Last Samurai, as some people would like to call it. He does try to launch a transformation of Kadon, but that distracts him from charging and uh, interrupts his push there. So now Ten One's in the fight, but he's not getting Rev Crystal, probably because the Rev Crystals were used on a Carnosaur recently. And he's getting wrecked. Now he does get the Annoying Manticore here, which is definitely, definitely not great for me. But he's almost a goner. Uh, he's is trying to pursue my handguns, definitely doing a good bit of damage, but the Zitlow Drax card is coming in, cor courageously just diving in, uh, heedless of their losses. Rev Crystal goes down 10 and 1, healing him, but um, we're willing him down for sure. It's going to heal him for a lot, though, so that's pretty nasty stuff. And the Bastildon's still trying to shut me down. Those Rev Crystals, just disgusting. That said, good old Faith, Gunpowder, and Steel stacked on top of uh, Accusation here against 10 and 1, definitely doing some work. Uh, the handgunners obviously being wrecked a bit, but uh, Baltas are actually committing here to the fight. Not a coward. He's going to dive in there, do some damage, gets in on 10 and 1, and smacks him around a little bit. You can see those 200 point chunks being done by Baltas are definitely useful, and 10 and 1's actually going to go down. So that is huge for me. Now, the Feral Manticore here has gotten rid of my Silver Bullets, which is definitely not good. Great Swords are badly beaten down, but they're going to try their best. And at this point, it's a very. Uh, well, uh, tough. It's a very, at this point, sort of uh, muted fight, I guess. It's two Bestilodons fighting alone against the last remnants of this Imperial Expeditionary Force. We've got a few handguns still online, though, which is probably going to be the game changer, especially this one big unit of them with 50 models. Uh, Stone's Revenge actually also have 40 models, and it's worth noting these guys do quite a lot of range damage as well. 26, 14 and 2, uh, 14 AP is no joke. So they're going to be able to lay the smack down on these guys, and it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory for the Empire. Now I won this game, but that doesn't change the fact that I actually really hate this, hated this build, and it actually really made me kind of flustered and annoyed. Uh, and I really think it demonstrates one of the problems, not just brought about by this patch, but one of the problems that still hasn't been addressed in multiplayer, which is single entity abuse. Um, like I said, there's previously, and maybe it's still viable, though maybe less so with the summon nerfs, there's previously a vampire count build that just relied on mass summons bim. You're like triple necromancer, um... Mortis Engines, Black Coaches, and maybe Vargulfs or whatever, and just spam zombies. And that was a disgusting build. And this build as well is just disgusting. Now, you can't really stop these guys without blobbing. Like, I guess if I brought, like, Outrider spam. But against any balanced build, this is a very abusive composition. Uh, because you can't net down all these troops. You're going to have to blob up, try to stop them, and then Lord Croak is going to nuke you in the process. And if you run away from the nuke, then it opens up the possibility that these Carnosaurs and stuff get on your backline, get on your shooting, shut you down. Uh, it's a very tanky build because you got the Bastilodons, you got Poison on 10 and 1, so in melee you're not going to be taking that much damage. Uh, you still have support from the Feral the Cold ones, and it's just kind of a disgusting composition, uh, in, in my humble opinion. Um, maybe you guys don't agree, that's fine, but uh, uh, that's just kind of my take on it. Um, I just think I got some good value out of a Desolator. Lord Croak had an absolute field day, annihilating, you know, Knights of Blazing Sun. Do keep in mind, those guys actually have 25% magic resist, and it did basically nothing for them uh, in that situation. Uh, Deliverance of Eatsa is a stupidly powerful spell. I don't actually think Croak is OP. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't actually think Croak is fairly well balanced, given just how terrible he is in melee and how expensive he is and um, the fact that he's literally only has one gimmick, and that's his spells. I'm not, actually not troubled by that, but just this combination is... Fairly disgusting, in my opinion. So, um, as for this build, like I said, I think it's actually pretty decent against uh, lizards. Obviously, no impressive kill counts here, except the Knights of the Blazing Sun, who I think dumps for some cold ones. Um, but if you're looking to deal with dino blobs, uh, this or dinos in general, this is not a bad composition. Like I said, though, I'd just ditch Balthazar in favor of a uh, in favor of or ditch some of Baltazar's changes in favor of Final Transmutation, specifically for situations like this, or if your opponent just blobs. Because I can see Lizardman blobs becoming more common. Um, if we run what the same comp I had before, you can cut those spells out, you can cut that out. Um, and... I think I had a 1561, and we can kind of... So he cost 1561 with this configuration. If we did the configuration I had... Um, 
it's we're like 15 points shy but um in the worst case you can probably scrape it out somehow I, i'm not entirely sure how you what you need to change here there in the build but i'm sure you could get scrape out a few points uh somewhere so regardless um well <laughs> an interesting game for my opponent um a good game i suppose it was really tight came right down to the wire uh it was just i wouldn't not a game i would define as <laughs> exactly fun um <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you found it entertaining hope it gave you an idea idea of what to look out for in this match hope it gave you an idea on how some of the new stuff performs including the guns and the new lizards uh, because i do think there was actually a good demonstration of the new lizards including the uh, laser lizards and the new uh cr and croak of course and ten in one and all that stuff there um the new witch hunter of course also a very fun change so like i said i do hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you found it entertaining um if you did as usual be sure to leave a like subscribe and share if you have any comments any criticism any questions do not hesitate to post them down below and I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. Uh, I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.